What's up everybody? Welcome back to another transmission video. I figured since we just wrapped up our series on the DIY kits, uh, we should continue on with the transmission stuff just a little bit. And something that I get a lot of questions on that I don't see a lot of information out there on is how to properly ship a transmission. Uh, really this is going to apply for if you're just sending a core in or if you're sending in a unit to be repaired or refreshed uh, and you want to make sure that that thing doesn't get damaged. So we're going to dive right into that. The first thing that we're going to do or that I would recommend that you do is tape up any of your cooler fittings, uh, anything that is exposed like uh, if you don't have a vehicle speed sensor in it, your dipstick grommet on the other side. I like to just take some masking tape and tape all that stuff up. By doing that, you're just going to ensure that you're not going to get any sort of debris or moisture, anything that could uh, get through the plastic wrap and get into the cooler line fittings. Now, if this is a core, uh, you can skip this step. This usually isn't as critical. But if you're sending back a brand new unit or a unit that is a good unit that is just getting refreshed, I like to take the time uh, to make sure that that thing is sealed up as good as possible. So now the next thing that I like to do is I like to go ahead and stand the transmission up on the bell housing and then wrap some plastic wrap around it. Now this plastic wrap you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, you can get it a couple different other places, but typically it is the cheapest at Lowe's and Home Depot. Just some basic plastic wrap, nothing special. And I just like to run it around the transmission pan here to start with, uh, just to keep from tearing up the new pans. Getting that first wrap around it started is always the hardest part, and then it's much easier after that. And then I'll just run around it five or six times just to make sure we got some good cushion built up. So now that we've got a good sufficient wrap on the pan area here, now we can go and get a pallet and start putting the transmission on the pallet. So let's go grab a pallet and talk about pallet selection. So when you're choosing a pallet, you want to make sure that you get something that's good and sturdy and it's not all beat up too bad. I've seen some pallets come in here that I'm surprised they ever even made it. Uh, really thin, rickety, missing most of the boards. And you guys have to understand that these shipping companies can be hard on stuff. So you want to have a pallet that is going to survive the trip. Also very important, and you'll see once we put the transmission on this, you want to have a pallet that is a good amount larger than your transmission. You do not want any part of the transmission hanging off of the pallet. These things get ran through a freight dock with forklifts, they're grabbing these things and slinging them around at a high rate of speed. Trust me, they do not care about your five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar transmission. They are just trying to do their job and go home for the day. So you want to make sure that you have a good buffer room in case this thing gets crashed into. The other thing I like to do before we put the transmission on the pallet is I like to take a box and put a little packing material in it if it's a nice brand new transmission. Put it in the center of the pallet there, and that is what the transmission is actually going to sit into, just so that way we can protect our pan from getting all scratched up during shipping. Now, if you don't have access to a pallet uh, where you work, there's a lot of companies that have tons of excess pallets that will gladly give you one for free. Just drive around an industrial park and go and talk to some managers and see if they got any pallets that they'll give you. Uh, if you spend just a little bit of time, you'll be sure to find something that you can use. So now let's get the transmission, put it on the pallet here, and then we'll talk about the dimensions and you'll see what I'm talking about as far as a buffer zone. 
So when you set the transmission on the pallet, you're gonna to wanna to try to center it up the best that you can. Sometimes you have to go one way or another just to get the pan sitting right on the slats of the pallet. But you can see where there's plenty of buffer room around the transmission, 360 degrees. So that way, if it does get bumped with another pallet or another crate, you don't have an issue. I personally typically do not like to ship stuff in a crate. Uh, usually when I, if I do ship something in a crate, it's because we're shipping more than just a transmission. The problem that you have to be careful for on the crate stuff is you have to really trust the carrier that you're working with. You wanna make sure you put do not stack on it. You wanna make sure that you specify that in the bill of lading. But even if you do all those things, some of these carriers will still stack stuff on top of it. And I have had a bell housing get busted before because they stacked a do not stack crate. So I have had far, far better luck just using a proper sized pallet. So now that we have the transmission on the pallet here, now we can go and run around it with some plastic wrap and we'll basically wrap around the outer perimeter of it. And that's gonna seal up our input shaft, our output shaft. That's gonna final seal all of the areas that could get contamination from dust, dirt, moisture, etc., and get it to where this thing will make the trip without any issues. All right, so now that we've got it all wrapped up really well, we know that it is good and sealed up. Now we need to secure it to the pallet. Uh, the easiest way to do this is with two ratchet straps. If you don't have any ratchet straps to spare, you can go to uh, Home Depot and actually get some Husky ratchet straps for about eight or nine dollars. Uh, it's usually the best bang for your buck and it comes with four of them. And if you're getting a transmission from the manufacturer, like me, and you are returning the core back, then your transmission's already gonna come with ratchet straps and you can just reuse those ratchet straps. That is one of the reasons why uh, companies like myself like to use the ratchet strap setup is because if you did a banding setup, that's all well and fine for me, the person sending you the transmission, but then uh, you're kind of out in left field when you have to send the core back. But if I strap the transmission when you get the core, put back on the pallet, you can use the same straps. You don't have to go out and buy straps. But if you are going to be sending in your transmission you know, without a core uh, in any situation like that, the Husky straps are usually the best bang for your buck. So now I'll show you guys how I like to strap these, which I think is the easiest and most surefire way. So usually every pallet's gonna have the fork pocket here. I'll just take the eyelet end and run it through like that. <laughs> And then I'll actually take the end of the strap and I'll run it through the eyelet hole like that. And so now I don't have to worry about this strap ever popping off. If you just, you know, hook this to uh, one of the slats here, it can bust the slat and you can lose your strapping that way. So with this, it's part of the main frame of the skid or the pallet and you never have to worry about it. And then... I'll just run it over the bell housing of the transmission like so. And then I'll feed it through the ratchet strap or the ratchet, I should say, of the ratchet strap. And then I'll do the same concept over here with running it through the main frame of the pallet. And 
And then when you go to strap these down, you want to leave a little bit of slack because you want the ratchet, the roller on the ratchet, you want it to curl up the strap at least two or three times. If you pull this thing super tight and just barely ratchet it, this ratchet strap can actually come loose when it's hitting bumps. So it's important to make sure that you leave a little bit of slack in this. Now I usually won't go and cinch this all the way down until we put the back one on. So on this rear one here, I'm gonna do it uh, the opposite side, but in the same fashion, just so that way I can show you guys how I do the ratchet end. So the same deal as before, we're gonna feed the strap through the ratchet and then back out the back side like that. We're gonna pull it. And then we're going to take the hook end. We're gonna go underneath our pallet slot or our fork slot, I should say. And then I like to hook this hook. I like to hook the hook back to the strap itself like that. Just so once again, you don't have to worry about this thing popping loose. And then same thing as the front. We're gonna pull a little bit of slack out of it, but leave some slack in it for ratcheting. And make sure that this thing ratchets a couple times. And then now we're ready to kind of get tight with it. Now I'll typically tighten this up until it actually starts to bow the pallet. When the pallet starts bowing, you know that the transmission is good and secured. And just like all the old white folk dads say, that's not going anywhere. And then I'll come back to the front one here and give this a little bit more tension just to make sure it's good. You don't want to bow the pallet up too much. If you get the pallet too bowed, it makes it hard to get a pallet jack in. And then they might end up tearing it up because they're frustrated trying to move it around. And then last thing we need to do as far as strapping goes, we just need to take care of these loose ends. I like to fold it over on itself so that way it's doubled up like so. And then I'll just basically run around it like that nothing special just kind of put it in a knot the reason that you don't want to just knot up a single strap is because you'll never get it untied again once you do that and then i'll just do the same thing for the rear back here So now our transmission is almost ready to ship and there's just one final step here which is attaching the bill of lading so if you got the transmission from somebody like me who is setting up the return shipping for you then they're going to email you a bill of lading that's going to look like this and you're going to print two of these out you're going to sign both of them at the bottom date them you're going to keep one to give to the driver when they come and pick your transmission up and then the other one i like to attach to the transmission i like to stick it typically on the front of the bell housing here and i like to tape it on with some clear tape and i'll tape the entire thing so that way if this thing gets scratched or anything it doesn't rip the bill of lighting off now you do not have to have a bill of lading attached to this when the carrier picks it up they will put their own tracking stickers on it but i have found it helpful to have that visible uh, it seems like you have a much better chance of getting the transmission to the correct terminal to you uh, in a safe timely manner so i just like to take this uh, scotch clear tape and stick it right to the front here And then when I'm doing this, I'm trying to keep the uh, bill of lading as straight and clean as possible. If it's all crumpled up, then they won't be able to read it as easily. So I'm just trying to take my time and do a nice job here.
So now our bill of lading is attached. Our transmission is secured. It's wrapped up. It's on a proper pallet and this thing is ready to go. So now you guys have a little tutorial for how to ship your own transmissions. Just something that I do every day and just thought, hey, this is probably something that a lot of people don't know how to do. And it is something that I get a lot of questions on. So hope you guys found this one helpful. If you're new here, click the subscribe button. Hit that like button to help me get this helpful content out to more people. And like always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.